President Cyril Ramaphosa has authorized the deployment of around 880 members of the South African National Defense Force to safeguard a number of Eskom power stations around the country. This time, the deployment runs from the 17th of April to October this year. There have been previous deployments for soldiers to assist the police in protecting the power stations against sabotage and theft. Has their deployment, though, helped on the ground so far? Let's speak to Calvin Rafadi, forensic investigator at Biz Traces, who joins us live. Now, thank you so much, Calvin, for your time. I mean, you've conducted a, an investigation into sabotage claims at Tutuka Pass Station. Let's talk about, um, you know, this particular deployment because it's not the first time it's happening. It's just simply an extension of, you know, the soldiers being on the ground. Has it yielded any re results from your vantage point? Uh, good evening, Bongiwe, and good evening to your viewers. So far, uh, it means it hasn't yielded any results. I mean, why are we here? We are on stage six. And then probably there's still a lot of sabotage that is ongoing still at the power station. And uh, the first troops uh, sent uh, by the SANGF, they can only guard, you know, the infrastructure. And then the procurement issues, they, they've got nothing to do with that. And that's where we always say the sabotage derives from procurement. So let's talk about that then, because someone may not be understanding tonight, because, you know, when you think about the protection, one thinks about the fact that you're protecting it from being vandalized, you're protecting people from taking certain, you know, parts and all of that, as we've seen in some of the reports. So what does then it mean? What does it mean then when you say that it's happening in the procurement for someone who's watching tonight who simply doesn't understand? All right, now that's a, that's a good one, Bungiwe. Now we've got in the power station what we call CNI maintenance. So it's control and instruments. So it, it actually deals with uh, the maintaining of the boilers and the turbine, which are intertwined. Now most of the so-called informal tendering, your LPO, local purchase orders, that's where now they procure certain components for to service and maintain this particular components in the power station. Now, it, what, what I'm saying is, once th those parts are procured, three of them must be procured and some are kept in the storage. But this particular uh, other rotten employees, what they do, they break in the power station so that they can come back and, 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 and procure this very same components, but they don't even buy original parts, the OEM of, of those particular parts. And then also the procuring of coal, where now uh, uh, they get the purchase order now to, 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 to supply the coal, but uh, they bring rocks into the power station. So it derives from what we call uh, the procurement, local purchase orders. So those type of criminals, you need to, to follow the money and see how they manipulate the system when it comes to contract policies, PO numbers, your uh, uh, procurement uh, uh, numbers, your goods receipt numbers, because that's where the procurement of this particular part, the shenanigans is at. So is it still then a case of simply some cameras maybe would be switched off in some of the storage facilities that you cannot then be able to detect that these particular parts have gone missing and some of the cameras as well not being able to detect that coal has gone out to be mixed or, or, or some kind of operations like that? Yes, guess what, Bongiwe? When I was at Tutuka doing the sabotage investigation uh, in 2019, the cameras at what we call the EMD storage, because that's why they keep the components, the particular three components of each of the units for, for the maintenance of the CNI. Those cameras, they were not even monitored by the security of ESCO. They were monitored by someone else and some individual who also happens to have installed those particular cameras without a proper uh, a serial or even uh, uh, running a company under a, a close corporation, which, which now, if you follow his uh, uh, appointment at the power station, you can't find him at Cipro because with a sole prop, what, what happens is Bongiwe trading as instrumental. You don't register those type of... of uh, 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 a close cooperation at the PTY. But in essence, most of those cameras, they were not even monitored by, 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 by ESCOM security at the time, not knowing of now, but it shows that if we're still sitting with this type of problems, it means the same problem still persists. So it's futile then to have the, you know, the, the soldiers there, if these particular problems continue then to exist inside. So this 100, over 146 million rand that is being spent now, in addition to what we've seen in the past, if I'm listening to you correctly, then it's futile if it's being spent, if things are not being dealt with at root level. 
Yes, no, no, no. It is it is a wasteful expenditure. And and I always ask, where is the head of security of ESCOM? Where is the so-called NICOC or net join from the presidency's office? What does the intel tell them? Because the troops they can the troops, and I'm saying the troops, I repeat it, they can only guard the outside of the power station and even some of the sites where we call it uh, the voltage yard, because the voltage yard, that's where they keep the the, the cables and the coppers there. And some of these uh, criminals, they tend to cut the, cut the fence at night, goes and then peel off those particular uh, 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 wires. But remember, these old power stations, in, 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 the, in the past, they used to have uh, uh, patrolling docks, kennels. And we suggested that, why don't we bring dogs to patrol inside the, 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 those particular power stations? Because with the dog, even when there's a wetland, they can sense on the other side of, uh, of, uh, of the tunnels. But now they opted to pay absorbent millions and bring uh, uh, the SANDF. So we're going nowhere but slowly. So is, is the problem not also com further compounded by the fact that we have a minister of e electricity whose powers and functions are still not clear at this particular stage? Look, his powers are not clear at this particular stage, but uh, also with the Minister of, uh, of this Electricity, I, I found it very strange that uh, he went and tried to diagnose most of the problems at ESCOM, but he never solely picked up uh, the main issue of procurement, sabotage, and, and, and corruption at those power stations. But guess what, Bongi? There are a lot of engineers that are resigning, and good engineers, by the way, in, in ESCOM, and they know the truth, and we wish they can man up one day and be like Judge Cameroon and save the country, tell us the truth, what is happening there? Why are they resigning? Who are the rotten uh, employees from Rotec that are influencing for, for, for the procurement and, 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 and shenanigans and the sabotage at ESCO? Because they know the truth. But with the current minister, I mean, he's got no powers. And besides, the way he diagnosed the power station, it shows that, no, he still has a lot of due diligence to, to, to carry on. All right. It looks like, uh, you know, lots of questions will still be asked to offer the law enforcement authorities as well who are appearing before Parliament tomorrow in this particular matter. But let me thank you for your time this afternoon, Calvin. Do appreciate it. That is uh, Calvin Rafadi, Biz Traces Forensic Investigator.